Here's a very special video which was inspired by a comment that I got from Doran Tall. Stop buying Mirazond when you have infinite gold. I don't know why he puts all the, the dots there. Seems like he has like a speech problem. Anyway, it seems like his main argument is that it just eats up the animation time. Uh, I replied with, it's still great stats and I can give me useful cards from my opponents and triples. So I don't think I will. I put dots in between there as well because maybe that reads better for him. He replied with, you lose more stats in animation time. You spend waiting and no, 99% of the time, that's a lot. You won't get a pirate and this is gold which you have infinite amounts of cool that you are not able to take criticism and when clearly wrong keep being bad i'm able to take criticism i'm able to you know do a discussion um i just hate when people are super aggressive about it and think they know it all and mostly i ignore these comments because they just are out for attention but i think this one was actually worth looking into so i replied to that with my thought process uh, basically his main point was that the animation time isn't worth the stats in return uh so we're gonna try and test that today uh also he said that most of the time Murzon doesn't give a pirate so it's not worth it but i think he forgot that with peggy any card you generate Generate also gives you stats. Plus, you don't really need pirates that desperately if your opponent has Amalgadons or Selfless or whatever. Those are useful cards to have. Plus, you can just get a random triple from that as well into Hamul if you get the same card a couple times. Now, usually I don't give trolls this much attention, you know, but I just thought it was actually interesting to try and test out. So, is Murzond worth it? First of all, this is the Murzond animations compared to pirate animations. So I'll go over it real quick and put a timer next to it. This is basically me buying and selling all the cards from Murzond and buying and selling for pirates, which is the same amount of cards essentially. And then after that, we'll check what the amount of stats is that both of those scenarios generated, what the potential was and the eventual outcome, depending on what your board looks like. Okay, so starting with the Murzond animation, I slowed down this clip to 25%. I'll also have have a timer in the top left that is slowed down to 25% and I'm gonna just only include the animation so time that I waste on other things uh, I cut out so that's what the cuts meant into the clips and to keep the selling animation consistent I just reused the same selling animation three times in a row in the end. So first I bought the Mersland which is pretty fast but I'm waiting until the buttons are clickable again which means the animation is complete now i just sell the mural zone and it's going to generate me three cards now while it is generating you can click on roll and you can sell your cards so i think this is the biggest animation saver is that while it is putting cards in my hand i can empty my hand and sell cards in the same time actually like doubling up on the animation time basically and i just repeated the imp mama sell here three times because i did take a break and only sold like two cards just to stay consistent so this was the Murzond animation, we bought and basically played 4 cards here total, which took us 7 seconds and 4 milliseconds. Now we'll talk about the stats and the after effects soon, now let's first compare this to buying and selling 4 pirates instead. Now I cut out any downtown again, there was like a very small lag spike which I cut out because the game was lagging, but I kept in everything that was necessary in order to complete these animations, so you'll see what I mean in a second. So I buy my first pirate here, now a really important thing about APM pirates is that you constantly gotta roll, so roll animations have to be included with buying pirates because that is literally the difference between Murzond and just cycling pirates. Murzond you get four cards for just buying one card and just having that one buy animation and it doesn't include the hogger gold animations so the rolls are included also me looking for pirates and you know buying the right one. And just to keep the selling animation consistent I just used the imp mama sell here four times again. Now noteworthy is you don't get the looter animation here but I don't think that slows you down at any given point but with Murzond you can sell while buying cards which is not something you can do when cycling pirates so that's another massive time saver the fact that you have to constantly buy and sell and you can't multitask too much when just you know cycling pirates essentially this time we ended up with 12 seconds 4 milliseconds just to cycle four cards as well that are pirates not generated by anything else but what did we achieve how much more did we achieve cycling pirates compared to Murzond and is it worth it so in both cases we generated four cards but in the second example four of them were guaranteed pirates the animation time was almost double so let's look at the stats for peggy you know it's exactly the same stats whether you get random cards in hand or you get pirates the stats are the same so if you just have peggy on the board Murzond is pretty much always worth it but if you have a salty looter, at least one, then you get an extra stat for every pirate that you play. So with pirates, you double up. So let's say on average that your board has one peggy and one salty looter. This means that the pirates essentially put out double the stats than the mural zones, but that also reflects in the animation time. So, you know, it is still worth it if you're just looking 
purely at the stats. Now, if you have more looters than Peggy's, then you can start debating. In this game specifically, I did have a golden looter and only one Peggy, so stat-wise, it was better to cycle the pirates. But, and now here is the massive but. The pirates are just pure stats. The Mirzlon can also get you triples because you have a golden brand and you might play multiple Mirzlons in a turn. It's very likely that you find the same card over and over. Triple, and then you can hit Hamul into another full pirate shop that can lead to more triples, more stats, baggies, like whatever. Of course, you can also triple into Amalgadons, Max Nas, maybe Zap if you need it. And since you're very often already in an endgame, people will play tech cards like Selfless, Spores, maybe even Amalgadons. And in this game specifically, as you'll see right now, my last opponent did have an Amalgadon, so we could have hit that and just have like perfect amalgadons with this golden brand on the board. Those are probably the biggest payoffs of playing Mirazon, not necessarily the stats. So Dorental, hope this answers your question. Please stay bad. <laughs> but yeah, for real, uh, I don't mind comments, I take criticism, but please be respectful, don't be, or come off like an asshole, because either I will just ignore you, or I'll make fun of you. <laughs> if you make fun of me, I'm allowed to do it back. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of content, and I'll see you next time.